This guide is part two on how to use a post-process as a scope zoom. It further explores the ideas and implementations presented in part one. Now for a refresher on how this works. This diagram uh, generally illustrates how the setup of a post-process scope zoom works. Uh, you attach a mesh that will act as your mask for the zoom to the mesh on, of your scope. That mesh will then be configured to be visible in the custom lab. From there, use post-process to identify the quote-unquote zoom mesh on the screen while also applying a zoom effect with post-process. With this implementation, you can create a zoom effect for scopes. However, it may not work when you need to have multiple meshes utilizing the custom depth. In this guide, part 2, we'll be working to fix that so that you can now utilize stencil depth for multiple meshes. This will allow you to create more complex types of scopes like a thermal scope. In this diagram, it shows how we will be improving that implementation. In summary, what we will do is we will be reversing how the scope zoom mask works. Instead of creating an include part of the screen, we will instead be creating an exclude part of the screen, meaning parts of the screen without the mask mesh not be included in the zoom effect. All right, some disclaimers before we continue. Of course, you already need to be familiar with custom depth before continuing. Also, you need to be already familiar on how to do post-process scope zoom check out part one if you haven't already this guide is mainly expanding upon the ideas of that part and improving our solution next there are some things you need to decide on and create a general guideline for using stencils you need to have a general guideline on what stencils to use on what purpose for this guide i will be using one for the scope mask mesh and four for the highlighted thermal targets right we're starting with a freshly created Unreal project with an FPS template. First, we need to change this to product settings. Go to add in project settings. Go to change custom uh, stencil depth pass option. It's an stencil enabled. Okay, we're good there. Next, I will create uh, folders for this demo. I'll just name it PP demo, just to keep it simple. For organization's sake, I will name the subfolders as one for mesh and one for the material. I'll just name it uh, PP, uh, PP sites. Come on, site. PP site uh, materials. Right, now I need to import the FBX files for this demo. Uh, just download the files from the link in the description and then import them to the folder accordingly. Okay, yes, this is the downloaded one. Just go to the file and then the asset, uh, get the all the FBX files and put them in the mesh folder. That I'll create, put them in the mesh folder for me. All right, all good. Just checking this one. I'm going to check everything. This is the uh, mask mesh for the PP scope. All right. This one is fine. All right. This one is good. All right. Next for the scope. Okay. Oh, looks good. Next, I need to add a new socket. Uh, for the post-process mesh uh, excluder to attach on. Okay, let me just create that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me just adjust it. So it's properly seated in the scope. All right, should be good. Next, I will need to set up the player character. All right, time to find that. All right, here, first person. Okay, I will need to add two static mesh components. One for the site mesh and one for the scope zoom mesh. So I'm just gonna add two uh, static mesh components. And I'll just name them one for site mesh and one for, I'll just name it uh, PP site mask mesh or something. It's good. 
All right, now uh, the static meshes will need to be assigned to the correct static mesh components. Okay, for the site mesh, it's uh, a the ACOG mesh, the scope mesh, yeah. For the PP site mass mesh, it's the excluder mesh for the scope. All right, there we go. Okay, that looks good. Next, I need to adjust the sights so the visibility is clear when in the per first person perspective. All right, let me just adjust this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just some adjustments and I'll make it bigger so we can see it better all right that should be good next i need to change the mask mesh some um, yeah next i will just okay need to change the render in main pass to unchecked need to change the render in depth pass to unchecked and next is render to custom depth to check next set the custom depth stance value to one and we should be good there just gonna play to see how it looks okay just going to go there okay that looks good okay now to check if the mesh is in proper the correct stencil yeah that's good okay now we will start working on the post-process material itself first open the fold your fo desired folder and explorer okay in downloaded files that i gave you uh under pp or post process go to starting if you want to follow along and use the ending if you want to get the end products all right copy over there now just go back to the unreal engine editor and we should be good okay now we will be editing this to use stencils so that it's uh yeah updated okay now okay as part of the materials will be redesigned so it utilizes stencils instead of the custom depth okay First, I change the uh, custom depth to custom stencil. Okay, just making space for the modifications. Next, I need to create a scalar parameter, name it to stencil mask bits, and set the default value to 1. Now, I need to create a bit mask node from the parameter. Next, connect the divide node down there to the bitmask node. Yeah, I'm just uh, cleaning up, straightening it so it's more organized. That's good. Next, I need to connect this to the clamp. And after the clamp, I need to do a 1 minus node. Okay, this should be done here. Uh, this section. All right. All right, yeah, this section should identify the stencil and convert it into a mask onto the screen. All right, uh, next we will need to have another mask so the other parts of the scope will not affect the zoom. You see it here, that's the inner part and we need another mask to uh, mask the outer parts. All right, let's just go back to the material. All right, okay, now create a scalar parameter, another one. I'll just name it a site uh, exclude radius or something. And I'll put the value at 0 0.1 as default value. Okay, now create a radial gradient exponential nodes and connect the pin to the site ex uh connect the it to the radius 
from that node I need to create a component mask with just R as checked then I need to have a clamp node just create one there we go and then after that I need a linear interpolate node for to connect both of them okay perfect just there we go connect the lower part to alpha and connect the upper part to B after that I need to create a ceiling node okay we should be good there and then finally connect that to the linear interpolate node uh, parent there uh, and then rearrange the pins or just switch the A and B pins and we should be good all right should be done with the material right now uh, yeah we should be good just click apply and we should be good now go back to the uh, there we go okay well, it should be good okay go back to the character I need uh, post process components next uh, I need to check some settings uh, set enabled checked there we go it's checked Alright, and next set unbound checked. Okay, next I just need to set the post process material to the one we recently worked on. Alright, let me just find that. There we go. Rendering features, post process material, and then for the array, just follow along and just assign the one we created recently. All right, we should be good and it should be working correctly now. Just get play and see the results. Uh, just, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Now you have successfully converted your solution to the new one that uses stencils. All right, next part of this guide is focusing on utilizing multiple stencil values to create a thermal scope. This is mainly just to show how to use multiple stencils. The thermal effect will be uh, bare bones. If you want to create a quality scope, feel free to search that after you finish for this one. In this section, we will be creating a simple thermal scope, mainly just to illustrate how to utilize multiple stencils. First things first, we need to duplicate the uh, material we created before, and I'm just going to name it... Uh, with a thermal on the name to differentiate. This will be our material with a post-process thermal scope. Okay, all right, first things we need to move this down uh, for the modic modifications. Just to keep things tidy, just moving this down for more room. All right, all right. Um, first thing, I'm gonna create two copies of the uh, uh, yeah, we're just gonna move this up there. All right, first thing I'm gonna create two copies of the custom de or uh, scene texture nodes. All right, that's good. We'll need these later. All right, next we need to copy this section of the uh, scene, and this will identify the stencil value on the screen all right i'm just gonna move this and now we need to create an, another scalar parameter for this one it's uh name it the uh, thermal target mask bit this will be the bit that uh, the thermal targets on the world will be using uh, all right replace that with that all right now we need a uh, now we need component mask for both of these scene texture nodes both with r checked all right just copy that and we should be good for that next we need an if node Okay, and okay. All right, just connect that. All right, uh, okay. I need to change this first to scene depth. 
for the first one and for the second one is custom depth. There we go. Okay, now connect that all to the if node and then connect I need Okay, connect the bit mask to a greater than b and i need a constant for the last one a less than b just keep that as zero all right okay now i need a vector parameter that will highlight the targets on our thermal sites okay just name it as uh, i don't know thermal color i guess all right just Keep the color red. Let's keep it simple just to show it. All right. Now I need a linear interpolate node and connect the old zoom function to A. Connect the vector parameter to B and then connect the if node to the alpha. What this will do is, yeah, let's connect the final one to the old one. Okay, this thermal should be good. Next, I need to change the post-process material assigned to the new one, the thermal one. All right, we should be good there. Next, we need to shush. All right, good, good. Now we need to find a mesh to get highlighted. Uh, I'll just pick this box here. Okay, on properties, go to custom, render custom depth pass as checked, and set the custom stencil value to 4. That's the value we decided earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, just go play and check it. Mm -hmm. That's not right. Uh, okay, uh, that's not right. Okay, let's check the material first. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, I need the UV zoom function from the uh, normal scope zoom uh, connected to all the scene textures because they're part of the same same scope and all of them needs to be magnified to the same rate as the regular scope zoom. All right, we should be good. Okay, now let's check. All right, there we go. Okay, okay. I kept this sim simple mainly to illustrate how to use multiple stencil. Uh, feel free to modify for if you want to use a better looking thermal site. But yeah, now for some extra steps. All right, to improve the visibility on your scope, uh, one idea I've been using on my own projects is to manipulate the scale on the scope itself when the player is looking down on it. The idea is to manipulate the scope so it's flatter and as such will show like a 2D scope in the player's perspective. Mm -hmm. 